group. So he's been doing that, and uh, he's, uh, so God is uh, really uh, Satan touch, but then the Lord that heals. Amen. So, Devin, in the name of Jesus Christ, we just lift up Devin to the Father. Whatever that's internally wrong with him, Father, it, um, whether small or whatever it is, Lord, because you live inside of him. And we understand that nothing can come against him because the healer lives inside of him. So we thank you in advance, Father, for total healing from the top of his head to the bottom of his feet. But most of all, Father, heal his heart. So we thank you because all good and lasting things starts from inside, then it works his way out. And we know who lives inside of our heart in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Anybody else need prayer? We're just going for it. You know what I mean? If the Holy Spirit says to pray for you, don't, don't, don't hesitate to stop me. We pray, we pray right away. Amen to that? Okay. So that's really important. So prayer makes a difference. And um, yeah, please put your, uh, your, your prayer request and put it in our, um, our prayer bowl in our entryway. And, uh, we have communion Sunday, next Sunday the 10th. I made a mistake there. So it's going to be the 10th next week. And we do have a um, part blessing. Last Sunday of every month, the 31st. Okay. So we'll have a church vision night for those. Uh, it's going to be on um, January 29th. And uh, um, keep that date open, please, because we want to really start praying. Because we need to pray for God's direction, where He wants us to go and what He wants us to do. All are invited. Okay. We believe, or I believe, that I went into prayer and fasting before the Holy Spirit. And God is saying that every one of us have to have some kind, some kind of skin in the game. Okay? We have to be investors in the kingdom of heaven. Because time is, is running short. And that's really important that we understand that. Okay? God, Jesus is coming soon. And, and uh, we cannot be part-time Christians. The reason for that, we have a full-time adversary. His name is the devil. Okay? And he's working overtime to try to conquer us. But it's for me and my house. We're going to serve the Lord. Amen? So we're going to all invite him. We're going to cast a vision for our church and and would ask people to participate in what God is doing within the church. Amen? So, we, with God, we believe that uh, we are greater together. Hebrews 10, 24 and 25 says, Let all of us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works. And let us not neglect our meeting together as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. Amen? So, everyone does matter. Everyone can contribute something. Everyone, how many of you know how to pray? Pray. Okay? If you do anything, first and foremost is pray. Okay? Um, lift up your concerns to the Lord and lift up our con the concerns for our church, your church. Okay? To the Lord. Because, okay, we're really meeting some headwinds. And that's really exciting because we're not going backwards. We're going into the headwinds. Amen? So that's important. Okay, let's pray for our tithes and offerings, and uh, I really want to share something with you today. So, Father, would you, would you bless the tithes and offerings and the missions given today? Very short, very pointed, and very, very, very anointed. So we thank you, Lord, that we get to give you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, guys. Okay. What is really important is God has appointed such a time as this for for some of you who are really looking for something new this year. Okay? The title of our message today is A New Season, A Clearer Vision, by the same reason in 2016. 2015 has been really challenging for some of us, amen? And really exciting is because God, God really prepares us for greater things. And when He prepares you, what happens? He puts you into the fire, and He challenges you. Okay, to change you, He will challenge you to do things for Him and with Him. And sometimes we just don't understand. Just like when you see the karate kid, right? Ah, Buddha, wax on, wax off. He says, "What in the world am I doing? I've been waxing on, waxing off, up and down, up and down." Then one day there's going to be a revelation for you. Okay. Mr. Miyagi will come and say, Ha, so, ha, up, down, down, this is why. Okay? Why is God doing things in your life? Why are you here? Why have you chosen to do things? Why have we bailed out or why have we got better? Is because God has a future hope and hope for you. Okay, according to Jeremiah 29, 11. 
Okay? So as we step into the new year, all of us wants to make some personal goals. Okay? We want to improve in the areas that we need improvement in. Amen? Some parts of our life just needs a little bit of tweaking. Okay? Just like driving a golf ball, right? A little bit of tweaking or cutting or whatever it is. Okay? But some, uh, some places in our life, we need some major improvements. Can I hear an amen? Yeah. Whether it be with our family, whether it be with our finances, whether it be with, with our, our relationship, whether it be our marriage, whatever it is. Our goals, okay? Our goals and visions, okay? You know what it is? It's simply just to get better. Just be a little bit better than yesterday. Isn't that cool? Some of us make such grand <coughs> goals and you know what? Those big goals don't have any pulling power because you say, you know what, that's not realistic. I want to lose 50 pounds. Wonderful. How are you going to do it? You look at 50. Wow, that's kind of plenty, huh? But if you break it down, 50 pounds within a year, how many pounds is that? during the week. If you can make a goal of losing a quarter of a pound a week after, you know, after a year, you lost 50 pounds. Maybe one less hamburger, one less this, one less that. So you buy, you make your goals in, okay, in realistic bite-sized pieces. Make sense? Little bit at a time, okay? So what's really, really important is that, is that stick to itiveness the tenacity, the courage that you, you know, no matter what, we're gonna make it happen. Okay, so what's really important this year, where do you need, okay, to make those changes, okay, but we must finally decide to get rid of the oldy moldy stuff that don't work. You know, those things that you're really trying hard to change but never change? That's really important that we do them. We have to replace them with brand new or renewed passion and commitment. Okay, this is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. That kind of commitment. Now here's something to think about. Think, do you know what stress is a result of doing things you don't like to do? Can you hear me? Amen. Passion is a result of doing what you enjoy doing. It might be really hard, but if you really enjoy doing it, no, you don't worry. It's it's like Christmas every single day. And to some people, to take a look at that, go, what are you doing? Okay. Um, so what is really important is what are you passionate about? and what stresses you, okay? So what happens is we need God's grace in every area of life, okay? We need to have this new wineskin heart that we talk about, looking at things in a different way, okay? A different point of view. How can we do this better, okay? It's just like when you look at a you know, construction, you look at the, how can we do this better? There's better equipment, better techniques. You always have to have a heart of a learner, whatever it is, maybe, uh, doing your business or playing golf or surfing or whatever that you're doing or even your marriage you got to take a look at how can we do it better okay why aren't we getting better then you have to do is make of course corrections along the way so with that in mind I'm just going to give you three simple principles today okay I call it new season principles number one new season leave your past in your past can you hear man okay you cannot step into your future if you choose to remain stuck to your past. Some of us have been SOS stuck on stupid for such a long time. How do I know? Been there, did that. Trying harder, the things that don't work, doesn't work. Change. Okay? That's really important. So, the scripture is, again, okay, press on. I press on to possess the perfection for which Jesus Christ possessed me. No, dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it, but I focus on one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God, through Christ Jesus, is calling me. That is such a wonderful thing. You know, Paul was very successful in everything that he did. He had the authority, he had money, he had influence, but he didn't have Jesus until one day on the road to Damascus, Jesus got his attention. So the transformation from Saul to Paul okay, made a difference. Some of us this year we need to start praying that okay, Saul to Paul transformation where God will finally get your attention. I can remember exactly when God got my attention 
and took everything away. Okay? Why? Why does God do that? I'll get, uh, I'll get to that in a little bit. Okay? Second is clearer vision. We have to stay focused on God's assignment. In this new season, our vision as true followers of Jesus hasn't changed. It's been the very same since Jesus left over 2,000 years ago. Okay? He will return soon. Soon is relative though. Yeah, when is soon? We just don't know when he's coming, right? But we better get ready. Jesus is coming. Okay? So we don't know exact date, but before okay, but before he returns, he has given us each and every one of us, not just the pastor, each and every one of us Christians, okay, the same assignment. This is called the Great Commission. Matthew 28, 19 says, Therefore, Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And the beauty of this is we don't have to do it alone. It's with Christ. Okay? So we need to see things and, and see where we can share our faith with someone. And we have to be intentional. When we pray, says, God, put people in front of me today that I can share you with. Okay? But it's not always going to be an easy thing to do. Why? Because of flesh. Yeah? We have fear, we have uh, procrastination, and we have distractions, and da, da, da. And sometimes God puts it right in front of you, but you can't see it at all. Why? Because you don't know what you're looking for. Okay? I share this a lot. I'm looking for Waldo. Everybody look for Waldo. <laughs> Everybody striped, you know, red and white shirts, or looking for taco. You know, you're looking for squid, you cannot see them. But once you train your eyes to see them, they're all over the place. God says the harvest is ready, it's white, it's all over you. Okay, where's the harvest? How many of you okay, interact with people every single day? Ooh, choke now. You're going to start seeing things. That's just going to change your life. Why? Because, okay, the harvest is ready, but God says the workers are few. Okay? So, therefore, okay, pray to the, to the Lord of the harvest for more laborers. That's what we're praying for. If you want to increase the size of the kingdom of God, ask one person. Just want to ask one person. That will double the size of the kingdom of God immediately. Isn't that cool when you understand that? Okay? So it's not, okay, you don't have to have wonderful skills. You just have to have the courage to say, hey, brother, don't start. Okay? Amen. Okay? So, he will return. We need to see things with his eyes. A different set of lens, a different perspective, a clear vision. You know what we need? A spiritual, okay, polarized glasses. For those of you, okay, who go fishing or drive during the sunset or the uh, sunrise, when there's a glare, you guys, you can't see anything. But when you put, okay, you put polarized glasses on, man, you can see clearly, yeah? You put all the distractions, all the glares are gone. Okay, when I go fishing, when I put it on, I can't see anything. But when you put glasses on, you can see fish swimming in the water. Isn't that cool? Yeah. Sometimes I see people okay driving into the uh, into Makakilo from 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 uh, from Aia, and you cannot see the road. Why? Because the sunset it glares right into your eyes, and there's so many accidents when there's glares in your eyes. Or the sun rising as you're going uh, Honolulu early in the morning, it comes up and you can't see things. Or coming through a um, base three tunnel, and you're coming down toward toward uh, I am, and uh, you just blasted. But when you put your glasses on, okay, now you can see clearly now. So then we need to ask God to give us those spiritual polaroid lenses so we can see things around us without the glare of fear, of glare of procrastination. You know what you do? Just we, God says we have not because we ask not. All you have to do is ask God. Okay? And give them the levity or give them the choice of saying yes, no, or slow. Amen? But you have not because you ask not. So when you ask God, say, God, show me someone in my life today that need, I need to invite to church. That I need to share my faith with. It might be somebody in your family, somebody that's sitting right next to you, somebody that you play golf with, somebody you surf with, somebody that you sell your, your products to, somebody you give a service every single day where choke people that are unsafe. Lord, give me the courage 
Okay? To hear what you want to hear, see what you want me to see. And give me the courage just to share you with someone else. And you know what? God will be faithful. He'll put people in front of you. And so that's really important. Okay? He wants, okay, number one thing, he wants the unsaved to be saved. That's how simple it is. So, look for people in your life that need God. Okay? Just think for a moment. Just right now, somebody, God is putting somebody in your, in your thoughts right now. Yes, yeah, that's true. Listen more closely to the conversations around you. I love listening to people eavesdropping. You sit in this shopping center, you just listen. Wow. So you hear some really colorful stuff, don't you? Yeah? And you listen. You know what? God says, from the abundance of your heart, your mouth speaks. Okay? Whatever people are thinking, doubt, fear, unbelief, slander, whatever it is, or goodness or grace, you can hear them by the words that they say. I had a wonderful conversation with, with Jeremy yeah, at, at the party. We're sitting down and I said, wow, I'm so proud of you, man. Because last year we sat in about the same place and I said, you know, Jeremy, a year from now, man, something will change. Something radically changed in his life. Okay? Then we sat again. I said, next year, you wait, our conversation is going to be nuts. Why? Because he is hungry. He is thirsty. He comes to eat on Sunday. Not only on Sunday, but Monday and Tuesday. What is it there? Okay? He's constantly feeding himself the Word of God. Constantly. Why? The more you eat, the more nutrition you get, the spirit more spiritual, stronger you'll be. Amen? So if you want to get stronger this year, get into the Word of God. Have your conversations with God. I tell you what, we're going to sit down next year, you go, wow, wow, wow. Isn't it wonderful what the God has done, done in my life? Okay, so that's really important. So we need clarity, okay? And we need more of God's grace. So that's really important. God is looking for people who are looking for Him. But you've got to be convinced when you share your testimony with somebody that you are convinced. Not maybe someday. No, 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 no. Okay? You cannot be convincing unless you are convinced. Okay? You cannot get, sell Jesus Christ like a used car salesman. No. There has to be some conviction in your heart. Okay? You have to have some, have some fruit in your life. Okay? <coughs> Let me allow... Share just a little tidbit with you, okay? Before you can do that, to part with God, is God trying to get your attention? Think about it. What is He saying to you? What does He want you to get rid of, or what He wants you to do more? What are you doing? Just like me, I sat down and I. You know, I had to pray and fast and go before the Lord and say, what am I doing that is not exactly right, Lord? If you're going to ask that question, okay, hold on, because He's going to tell you exactly what, to, okay, what is not right. Whether it's been in our finances, in our marriage, in our relationship, in our future, raising our kids, whatever it is, doing church, okay, take a moment, be still, and listen to God. He will reveal things to you, the secret things He talks about, okay, that He wants you to get rid of and the things that He wants you to enhance. If there's anything that you're doing that is not pleasing to God, here's a good idea, okay? Two words. Stop it. That's what you used to tell our kids, right? They're doing something. All we do is say, hey, stop it. But sometimes God will not be nice when He speaks to you. He doesn't say, Keith, stop it. Stop it! Okay, get your attention, right? And some of us need a two-by-four ministry, right? Bam! Right between the eyes. Why? God wants our attention, our full attention. Okay? We must be persons who will deny ourselves. What it means that God is first. Deny ourselves, meaning that, you know what, God? It's you. It's not about me. It's all about you, Lord. My dreams, my hopes, my visions, it's all about you. And without you, I am nothing, Lord. Once we start to empty ourselves of ourselves and ask the Holy Spirit to indwell us, what happens? Things change in our lives. Miraculous things change. 
When you look back at your life again, you go, wow. Look at this wonderful thing the Lord has done in <coughs> our lives. That's when thanksgiving and joy tends to consume you. You know what is important? A lot of us are getting ready to get ready. We think we need a theology, a degree, a Bible school, da 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 da. You know what you need? Just courage. Okay? What is important is, is God will use the foolish things to dumbfound the wise. In other words, God, when He came to earth, He didn't go to the Pharisees and the Sadducees and all the Zealots. He came to what? Fishermen, ordinary people like you and me. Okay? They spoke common language okay they understood what is important about this if you want to work with god okay it cannot be part-time it's all full-time employment with full benefits read psalms 91 your benefit package is amazing if you choose to cooperate with god and do you know what is really important he says it's always on the job training Okay? He'll teach you along the way through His Holy Spirit. He will mentor you personally. Isn't that cool? He gives you an assignment. He gives you all the tools. And He mentors you with God. All things are possible. So we have no excuse. Just think. Whatever your vocation is. Think of who is the best of the best in your vocation. What if He came and said, You know what? Um, whatever you want to do. Okay? Maybe golf. Who has the best golfer in the world? He went to Keith. He went to, he went to Terry. He says, You know what? Okay? I'm going to teach you every single day. I will make myself available to you. Whatever you want, I'm going to teach you how to become better in golf. And it's free. <clears throat> how many would, would you go, yeah, I'll show you up. Why? You're passionate about it. How about surfing? Okay? If the best surfer in the world came to Devon and said, I am going to met you morning, noon, night. I am available to you. Whatever it is, we're going to work together. Okay? Or he went to, you know, designing clothes or air conditioning or whatever it is. The best of the best comes to you and says, I'm going to help you. I'm going to mentee. Okay. Brothers and sisters in Christ, the best of the best is called the Holy Spirit. He'll give you everything that you need. Instructions. Videotapes if you want. Isn't that cool? Okay. Texas. Okay. Instagrams, tweeters, whatever you want. He is available 24-7, 365. Okay? Whatever you want. Where you go on your finances, how do you get that free? He'll teach you how to do that. Okay? How do you have a better marriage? He'll teach you how to do that. Okay? How do you get rid of your anger? He'll teach you how to do that. Okay? How to change your language? He'll teach you how to do that. Whatever it is. It's called the Bible. Basic instructions before leaving earth. Isn't that cool? We have no excuses when we take a look at that. But you go, you sure? You sure? <coughs> yes. With God, all things are possible. This is, this is what uh, Joshua told the Israelites you know, when they were pressuring him. Joshua 24, 15 says, And if it seems evil to you to serve the Lord, choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Conviction. No matter what happens, I'm not going to serve the Lord of money. I'm not going to serve the Lord of fame or fortune. I'm going to serve the Lord. Period. No matter what. I had to come to that conclusion because I lived a life whereby you know, I had everything. But I found that I had nothing. I was so poor that all I had was money. Can anybody relate to that? Revelations 3.15 to 20 says, I know all the things you do, that you are neither hot nor cold. I wish that you were one or the other, but since you were lukewarm water, neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. Some people come to church, Christians, and eh, just come. They are attenders, but not members. They don't have any skin in the game. Okay, we call it Sunday only Christians. No, and this is what's really important. It's not being judgmental of anybody. It's your choice. But it's using good judgment. Okay? I want you to get better. Okay? Verse 19. I correct and discipline everyone I love. So be diligent and turn from your indifference. Verse 20. Look, I'm standing at the door and knock. If you hear my voice and open the door, I will come in. 
and we will share a meal together as friends. What intimacy. God is knocking at our doors. He wants us. Okay? What is really important is, how do I know when God is knocking on the door of my heart? Here's the truth. When somebody knocks on the door, it's because they're trying to get the person's attention on the other side. Amen? How can we tell if God is knocking on our hearts? Here it is. Three ways. One, conviction. Okay? When there is sin in our lives, God uses His Holy Spirit to bring that sin to our attention. You know when you're doing something, you just go, Ooh, something is not right. Yeah? God's purpose isn't to make us feel guilty about our sin. It is His purpose to help us to walk away from that sin. Amen? He wants us to repent. He wants to forgive us. This is why he puts conviction in our heart. Okay? But God doesn't want us to walk from this sin into another sin. That's not his purpose. He wants you to walk away from that sin. That's really important. God wants us to be holy. And, not, and he is the one that is holy that will help us overcome sin. Okay? So that's really important. The second way is reminders. Some apps on your smartphone shows you okay, of reminders of uh, many different things. Uh, Lily has something that goes at different sounds for different things. And she knows exactly that, that goes at that, that goes at Okay, David's calling me different readings. Oh, this is a thing. This cracks me up because if you saw my phone, you understand I don't have anything to offer, right? Okay, I can always tell when God is knocking the door of my heart by the reminders He gives me. Okay, it's like uh, you know the alarm rings. I put, I put. If you, just, I'm really old school. Okay, I have a calendar book. I write it down over here. Some people put it on and on the app. And if if you lose your telephone, you you're gone. Right? Anybody lost your telephone? Yeah. And who? I tell you what. We we think. Lily just lost her. He said, we looked everywhere. We looked everywhere. Okay? So we said, well, let's think like mom. Where did she go? Da, 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 da. And we found it. But you know what? We lost a lot of phone calls. If you, if you send me a text message, okay, my phone is so old that I'll get it sometimes two or three days afterwards. Okay? I don't know how come, but it does like that, right? But God gives you this immediate reminders. It reminds me, too. So I didn't spend enough time in the Word today. Being, oh, Lord, I didn't pray today, Lord. Being, it always reminds me of the things that God wants me to do. Being, and I put notes all, if you look at my computer, okay, my, my monitor, I put, okay, I put notes all over the place. Why? It's because I, I, I know I'm going to forget. Anybody forgetful or just me? Okay, good. Okay, good. And I do that, okay? <coughs> So how, you know, if you take a look at this, okay, the second, the, the third way is challenging situations. Oh, man. Okay? This is God's last, less, least favorite way, okay, to get our attention. But sometimes it's the most effective way because some of us are so hard-headed. Okay? I'm not looking at anybody, but, you know, I am really, really stubborn sometimes. You know what? And sometimes instead of being focused, I get tunnel vision. I just, I don't see anything. My perspective gets very, very thin. I have to be reminded that it's not about me. It's all about Jesus is doing. Amen? So it's really important that, you know, let me ask you, have you ever asked God for more patience? All the time. What happened? Long oh, long suffering. Oh. <laughs> it puts you in situations that you need more patience. Right? Okay, you ask my kids, I am very impatient. I want things done yesterday. Anybody like me? You know how he answered? He gave me Lilia. <laughs> Lilia, so much grace. It's so cool. She goes, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, she is always the last person out of the house. And I'm over there. Oh, Anybody like that? Oh, I'm going to pray for you, man. I tell you, Luke Terry's looking down. <laughs> Busted, yeah? Okay. So, sometimes the only way that God 
can get our attention. He's going to put us in situations that we cannot handle it without his help. Whether it be in our finances, whether it be in our marriages, whether it be in our jobs or our health. Okay? If you read through the Bible, you realize that God had to use it often. Why? Humans make mistakes. And humans are stubborn. Right? For Adam, it was Eve. For Abraham, it was this Isaac. For Jonah, it was a whale. For Paul, it was a thorn. For me, it's Keith. I can't say <laughs> For Judas, it was money. What is your Eve? What is your Isaac? What is your whale? What is your Keith? What is your money? Is God knocking on your heart? Just think about it. Okay. But if you don't answer the door, what happens is you don't hear it anymore. Why? You put offense. You put distractions, you put people, you put your agenda, when you put things like that, okay, you can't hear it anymore. Okay? Before it was like this, you put something in, you cannot hear it anymore. So what is distracting you? Our thoughts, words, and behaviors are often influenced by people that we spend the most time with. Amen. Amen. Bible tells us that bad company corrupts good character. And the opposite is true too. Good company corrupts bad character. Amen. So surround yourself with good people. Okay? And God's company transforms your life to be more like Jesus. So hang around with Jesus. Okay? That's what he wants. Okay? And some of us, I used to do this. So I'm, I'm just going to open up this. Some of us are trying to live in two worlds. One foot in the world. One another foot in God's world. Okay? As... Christians, there is no dual citizenship. It's either one or the other. If you're trying to do that, I know that you have a tug of war in your spirit between two ideologies. Yeah, no, yeah, no. Sometimes all the time. And we struggle and we struggle needlessly. And God allows that to happen in our lives. Fear, faith, give, no give. Okay? Whatever it is. What is God saying? What is the world saying? Okay, what is expected of me? What is God saying about me? And there is a tug of war. Galatians 5 talks about it. The difference between the Holy Spirit and your sinful nature constantly says, I'm fighting each other. Who you surrender to will run your life. Amen? So that's really important that we understand that. Okay? When you, you know, when, just think about it. When you spend time with other Christians, do you feel uncomfortable? I used to because I felt so inadequate. When you're doing something that you know you shouldn't, does something tug at your heart? We you just go, ah, it's minor stuff. God, God doesn't care about this part. No, God cares about everything. Remember, we are not of this world. So don't try to live in both worlds. Amen? Okay, this is what God says, not what I say. John 15.